guys, welcome to that show that you have all been waiting for, and that is Life Science and Learn Extra Live, Channel 319. You guys are already on it, of course. You're on Channel 319. <laughs> hey, this is Llewellyn. I hope you guys remember her. Hello. Hi, Llewellyn. How are you? All right, yourself. Okay. Good, thank you. I'm Katleho, and what are we going to be doing today? We are doing microbiology. Okay. So things that you don't normally see, or well, you can see, but they're very small. You need a microscope. Okay, cool. So we're going to be... Zooming into some stuff today. Yeah, some good-looking stuff. Uh, you know, <laughs> when life science people say good-looking, guys, most of the time it's not good-looking. <laughs> Take it from me. I've seen a few things in the studio. Cool, I'll <laughs> you see you can go over to your board. <laughs> so, guys, it's going to be such an awesome show. All of you guys who are joining us, Great Elevens, www.facebook.com forward slash learn extra is our Facebook page. And remember, at learn extra, our Twitter handle, guys. We also have a cool, updated, new, fresh website. I'm going to put it up for you guys just so that you can see these fantastic notes, fantastic schedules, everything that you need to know about learn extra, guys. It's going to be superb. And of course, we have such awesome sponsors, guys. We are so gifted here at learn extra. Macmillan. Thank you for sponsoring this awesome show. You guys make it so awesome. And we are going to make you proud as well. And you grade 11s better make us proud. For this first show, guys, I want you to interact as much as you can. I'm so excited to be here. I've missed you guys so much. You guys are older now. You're wiser. You're now in grade 11. So make sure that you're on that page and make it such a great show. Hey, Llewellyn. Yes, definitely. I just can't believe that you say they're wiser. They've always been wise. They've it's already there. Last it's just year they were a bit shaky, but nah, this year I'm perfect. sure they'll be great. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they're just perfect. <laughs> well, hello, guys. Hopefully you've had a, have a good holiday, right? And, um, you know, we need to look at mic microbiology because it's, it's, we always start from something very small and, and we go bigger and bigger and bigger, right? So what we're having a look at is biodiversity, which is a variety, which actually means, uh, biodiversity actually means a variety of, of things in, an, in the world or animals or plants or whatever. So if we have a look at it, it means a variety uh, and we're classifying them. In other words, who are they, what they are, what they do, right? And we're going to have a look at the microorganisms, the tiny things, the things we look at a micro microscope right so that is what we're doing today so it's, it's quite cool and quite lacquer right so if I start with the first thing this lesson what we are actually gonna do right is <coughs> we are going to just not too fast we're looking at the basic things right the basic ones we're looking at here we've got the virus right so we all know about our viruses forgive me I haven't done this in like years right the virus which of course we know of um, the flu virus, right? We know all these things. These are simple. And we're going to look at your bacteria. And, oh, we'll get into more detail, so stick with me, right? Your protista and your fungi, right? These are the ones. And the nice thing about it is I've got something special later. Not, not too big, but it's going to be awesome, I think, right? And we're going to discuss the role of them in the environment and what they do and how they do it and the bad parts and the good parts. Because you must, must remember that everything, everything that's on this earth is here for a specific purpose. Even the mosquitoes that irritate you, there's a reason why they're here. I, I don't know what it is, but I'm sure there's a reason. No, I'm kidding. There's definitely a reason why they're here, right? And we're going to have a look at how, how medicine and all of that is going to help us along. Right, so stay tuned. Take notes. It's the best thing you can ever do. Right, okay. So let's carry on. The first thing we're going to have a look at is your virus. Right, now, you know about a virus, and you might not think you know, but you do know about a virus. The strange thing about it is that there's always arguments. It's about whether it's living or whether it's non-living. Now, that's a big question, because myself, I think it's living, because it reproduces and it does all the stuff, right? Mrs. Khrif, that's what they call it. But it's, they all do a specific thing, right? Now, a friend of mine thinks that they're non-living. And somebody else thinks, sits on the thing and says, it depends what they're doing, if they're living or non-living. Non so let's have a look at it. You've got to make up your own mind. Right, but let's have a look. The first thing is, your virus, they are acellular. Now, we all know what a cell is. You remember this in grade 10. A cell, right, has got, if you're looking at a plant cell, it's got a, mem uh, a cell wall, a membrane, your uh, pro your, your nucleus, it's got your cytoplasm, it's got your organelles, you know, all that stuff. That is a nucleus. Now, this thing is acellular, which means it, ha it is not a cell. 
Now, that's already messed us up. Because think about yeah. it, Kat. Everything that we make up is a cell. Now, this is classified it is not a cell, right? So it doesn't have all the organelles in that inside it, right? Secondly, right, it's parasitic. Now, when I mention big words like this, like parasitic, it's very important to remember them because they're going to ask you. They're always going to say, what happens when this thing feeds off that thing? What is it called? Give the, the exact word for it. And it is parasitic. Right. And remember when we started this, I said to you, it's very small. So very, 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 like, like in, yeah, very small. Okay. So it's very small and it has different shapes. We've had a look at certain viruses are round and some are squiggly and, and some have got funny shapes and some look like it's gone all the way to the moon and back and landing on Mars, and like a spaceship, right? These are what we're looking at. So what I've done is I've got a nice picture here for you. A very nice, look at that, hey? How cool is that? That is a specific virus. And I put that virus down for a specific reason. This virus, right, okay, it's a bacteriophage. Okay, I'm going to write it here somewhere as soon as I can. There it is. Okay, it's bacteria phage, right? It's a bacteria phage virus, okay? This is not a bad virus. I, l I like this virus. This virus actually attacks bacteria. So how cool is that? This does nothing for us, right? So this doesn't hurt us. This attacks bacteria. Now remember that carefully. It attacks bacteria. I'm going to ask something later on about the bacteria. Right, so now the reason why I chose this is that you get this thing. Now in class, they're going to give you this drawing. You're going to have to draw it. Now this drawing is very important because this is the virus we look at drawing all the time. So when I teach, or if I go to set an exam, I like putting this in. I could say to the guys, please guys, draw and label the bacteriophage, right? This is a very important, and it's not that difficult to remember, okay? It's got a head or a capsule, and there it is, okay? It's not very difficult, okay? It's got a tail, which is the small little piece over there, right? Just that piece in the box. That's its tail, Yes? And the last, second last thing, it's got an end plate. It's right at the end of the tail so that it doesn't move, right? It's got that bottom piece. And then it's got these, it looks like little legs, right? But it's just tail fibers. It's just tail fibers. Now, what this thing actually does, you won't believe it, right? It runs up to the bacteria, well, what flies or whatever it does inside. Mm -hmm. It goes up to the bacteria. And if you can see it, it lands on the bacteria like this, right? That's nice. And... Watch carefully. Look how big. Um, let me try a different color because I don't think we're going to see it nicely. Let's try pink. That one. Look how big that is, right? And look how small that one is. What do you think is actually happening? Right? What they do is they jump onto the bacteria and they go... <whistles> As they do that, they inject certain stuff through there. What do they do? They... Yeah, you just want me to jump again, don't you? So they land and they jump and they go down and they squat and then they drop everything in there in a different way that we would okay, drop it. But anyway, right. okay, so if you understand it, that is very, very, very important, okay? That is the biggest virus or the most, the virus they're going to ask you to draw and label. So make sure you know how to draw it biologically. Remember, drawing on the left-hand side, you've got all the labels on the right, one underneath each other, label lines in ink. Okay, and no shading. I'm coloring it in to make, make it look pretty for you guys. Right, so you're happy with that. Okay, now, if I have a look at the next one, oh, I don't want to go back to that yet. What I want to explain to you is, this, di this virus, sorry, there was a reason why I didn't want to go on, but this virus, okay, this virus has RNA and DNA. Now, you're going to look at me and say, what is RNA and DNA? Okay, now, it's, it's DNA, you should know. DNA is what makes us us. It gives us our characteristics inside our body, right? And RNA does almost the same thing. I'm just not going to give you too much, okay? RNA is the s almost the same as DNA. I don't know how else to put it to you now. But th anyway, so this thing has RNA or DNA right on the inside. I'm going to take yellow here again. Right on the inside here. It's got one strand of either RNA or DNA, right? Now... When it like does the squat, right, 
it drops, it sends that RNA all the way out, or DNA, and it puts it inside this um, bacteria. And then that virus actually goes and um, puts, changes that thing's DNA or RNA into what it needs. Right, so it gives this big cell. Here it is. I'm just going to give it an old one of these. So it lands on side. It drops its little RNA inside, right? It changes this one's DNA or RNA, right? And it makes small little ones of it, right? With its DNA. It takes its DNA and it changes it so it makes it into the same virus. And then you get tons of these little viruses inside the cell. And after a while, what happens? The cell bursts. Now, we started with one virus, and all of a sudden, the bursting of this sends 10 million all over the place. Can you understand why one day you're feeling perfectly fine, you get home, you get a bit of a cough, hour later you're feeling worse, the next morning you can't get up out of bed? Okay, can you understand? It breeds or it reproduces so quickly, it's unbelievable. Right, now, let's carry on. Next thing we're going to have a look at is your bacteria. Now, your bacteria is quite a cool thing. It's prokaryotic. Now, you get two types of things. You get prokaryotic and you get eukaryotic. Now, eukaryotic is E-U and then K-A-R-Y-O-T-E, karyote. Okay? It's eukaryote and prokaryote. Now, the way I remember it is you means me. Right, if you get what I'm trying to say. So, eukat, there we go. It's eukat, you are eukaryotic if you get what I'm trying to say, and pro is bacteria, okay? Eucat is eukaryotic, and prokaryote is a bacteria. The reason why I say that is because we, as humans, are eukaryotic. Eukaryotic means we have a cell membrane, a nuclear membrane, sorry, a nu nuclear membrane inside, and prokaryotic doesn't. Okay, now, your bacteria... A bacteria is a, a bacteria is cellular, a cellular structure has got is a prokaryote, right? That means it has a nu it does not have a clear nucleus, right? Next thing, it's unicellular. Uni meaning one, uni one. It's a unit. Remember, you get units, tens, thousands, hundreds. Unit is one. So it's got it's a single thing, okay, it's distinguished into three different shapes. So this is what they're going to ask you, three shapes. These three shapes are quite easy to remember. They are coccus, right, bacillus, and spiruleus. Now watch, coccus is spheric, okay, which means, here we go, which means that was terrible. I'm going to scratch it one out. It means, I'm going to try this one, round, spherical, right? So a lot of them together makes a certain bacteria. Or this is a bacteria, and a lot of them together makes a lot, lots of bacteria. The next one is bacillus. Now, bacillus looks like a sausage, okay? So it's giving it one of these, okay? And then the last one is spirillus. Now, that sounds like spiral, okay? So it is giving it one of these. Okay, so those are the three that we really look at all the time. Those are the most important ones. And if we have a look at it, <coughs> these guys do three, they can get energy three ways. Because they've got to get energy. First one is through photosynthesis. The next one is through um, chemosynthesis, which means they take carbon dioxide and water and a little bit of nutrients over there, and they make energy. Cool. And the last one is heterotrophic, which means they eat other animals or they eat other plants. Okay, so that's your bacteria ways. Okay, now, they reproduce through binary fission. Remember you did mitosis? Now, mitosis makes new cells in us. Binary fission is how they reproduce themselves, but it's identical to mitosis. Hope that makes sense. Identical to mitosis, it just makes a brand new cell. Okay, cool. Now, here's the pictures. Coccus. Right, duck, round, I hope that works, round, bacillus, if you have a look, there we go, and the last one, oh wait, this is, take a guess, that's bacillus, right, and that one is, look at squiggly lines, it's terrible, look at the squiggly lines here, guys, that is spirilla, right, very nice, now, I'm going to stop it, protester for now, for a few minutes, wait, no, wait, I think I'm going to actually go on.
Time can wait for once for me. Right, now, protista. Okay, protista is quite cool. They are classified according to how they make their food. Okay, so obtain their nutrients. Okay, so you get certain types. The first one you're going to get, okay, is your animals. Your animal-like ones. So they can be animal, they can be plant, roundabout. The first one I'm going to have a look at is heterotrophic, okay? So they feed off certain things. So they would be like your amoeba. Can you, you've heard about an amoeba, right? Okay? Amoeba is quite cool, right? They do, they eat other things, they parasite. You can see they're also parasites, right? So they parasites, they eat things. Some don't just parasite on you, they just eat. Remember, parasite will suck out the blood. I get hurt. But a heterotroph means he eats me completely. Okay, so does it make sense? Now, if I have a look at it, they move. How do they move? Here's a nice big word for you. Okay, let me just remember how to say this. Put, uh, put, um, pseudopodia. <laughs> it's got to roll off the tongue. Do you know what I'm trying to say? <laughs> pseudopodia, right? Now, this is how... Can you remember a caterpillar? A caterpillar goes like, it like stretches out and then pulls itself and stretches out and pulls. That's pseudopodia, how it works. Right, so next one is cilia. Cilia, you'll remember, is those little hair-like structures and they move, right? Which is cool. The last one is flagella. It's just one long hair strand and that makes it move. No, it's not what you think it is. It makes one little hair thing and it moves, right? Now, Last one, the second last one is your plant-like things. It's autotrophic, which means it makes its own food. Okay, uh, they can be unicellular or multicellular, means two cells or one. And the nice thing about it is one that you see quite often if you go to the dam is your seaweed or your, um, what's that stuff called? Come help me out here, um, Kate. Algae? There we go, the algae. Very nice. You've been studying, right? <laughs> so algae is the other one. And then the last one, that we're going to have a look at is your fungus-like protista, which are heterotrophic or decomposers. Heterotrophic, they eat other animals, or they actually feed off dead, decaying matter. So what I've done is I've just given you some nice pictures. There's one. I know it's not. Th that is cellular under a microscope. And then you get, there's some more of them. Now, while you remember these pictures, right? If you've seen these pictures and you can see them, remember them. It's quite easy. It's quite nice, right? So I think you need a break because I've like gone quickly through these things and you need everything you've got. Kay. Okay, so now you have a few minutes or a minute or even less to actually just, just take this all in, guys. It's a lot. And wow, I'm so glad to see that you, grade 11s, are as excited as Llewellyn and me, guys. We've been waiting for this lesson, so I'm glad you could join us. And do not move off those seats for this break, guys. Just stay tuned. See you just now. Welcome back, Mindsetters. What an awesome show it has been this far. If you are just joining us, first of all, I'm sorry. But second of all, you can just jump onto the page, facebook.com forward slash learn extra, and get some updates. Guys, there's so many Mindsetters on the page today. I'm so happy, but I know we can do better. Call all your friends, guys. It's so fantastic to see that you guys are back for more, and you're back to learn extra. I'm so happy to be here, and I know you guys are too. And one more thing, I need your help, guys. Well, not from you, but I need the help of your teachers. Tomorrow, as soon as you get to school, Go to your teachers and say, please, 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 Mindset needs some content. Please send some content to us, guys. Ask your teachers to send some content to us. Your best teachers, guys, your favorite teachers, the teachers that you know rock your world. Tell them to send us content so that they can rock our world too. They can send this content to content at mindset.co.za. Content at mindset.co.za. Write that down, guys, so that you can get us more resources. The more, the merrier, guys, and the more, the better, obviously. Over to you, Llewellyn. I'm here. <laughs> now, <coughs> I've brought a couple of things uh, with me, right? So it was just to, to actually see what is going on, right? And it's always nice. Now, you've got to understand that I had to get these things going. Not all of them, but one thing, it's, um, one thing is, is, is getting to me is that they don't smell very nice. Right. So what I'm going to do is if you come closer, if, if you don't mind, so please come a bit closer. 
and um, you can understand. He's zooming in. Is he? Yeah, yeah, no, but I need him here. That's where he is. You're kidding me. That's where he is. Trust okay. me. Okay, now, if we have a look <laughs> at it, there is different little things here. Now, what I've got here is I've got a couple of things for fungi, right? Now, that is the next piece that we're looking at, right? So we, we've got fungi, because fungi is quite easy to get, right? So that is something you've got to remember. Now, this one was left over from, um, what's that stuff? Moose. Now, that is so cool, but doesn't smell very nice when you open. So all these things that you guys pull out of your fridges and put into the dustbin, don't think that when it's in the fridge, you are perfectly safe. You must understand that bacteria, viruses, fungi, all of those, they can handle certain type of temperatures. Some can handle low temperatures. Some can handle very, very high temperatures. So don't make the mistake of if it's in the fridge, it's safe. So please, please remember that. Now, let's have a look at this. If I have a look at these things, right, I've got a nice white one here. Now, this looks very nice. It looks like Father Christmas to me. To me, that's what it looks like. Like a beard, a nice snow white beard, right? This one. So the next one, if you can see it's nice and green, it it's the type of, of, of fungi that most probably can photosynthesize, right? So we've got the white one. We've got another white one. I don't want to touch it too much. So I'm going like, to open it up. You can see it actually sticks. If I poke it, they stick together. Can, can you understand what I'm saying, right? Sticks, and they like form one thing. And then right here, if you can have a look at it, this piece over here, this specific piece over here, I want you to have a good look at it. Right now, that part there is a very nice one because that there shows me different parts of fungi that you need to know. Right, it's got a sporangia pore, it's got sporangium. Right, and those are one of the nicest things. When I saw that, I thought, Whoa, that's going to be perfect for the lesson. Right, so that is quite cool. The next thing I have here, which, which is you have no, if you had to, if you, oh. You had to smell this. This smells like penicillin. Okay? This is penicillin at its best. So if you have that, sorry, my nose is itchy. If you have that, right, and you are allergic to penicillin, this you must stay away from. This is your bread mold, right? This is bread mold to the max. I mean, I kept this for a long time just to show you, right? So this is bread mold. I got moaned at my wife, so I had to keep this outside, Right? So if you have a look at it, it's nice, it's green. If I could get any closer, I don't want to take it out of the bag because it can be dangerous. I don't know if cat is... is no, uh, I'm okay. okay. I don't so want to So she's touch happy that. with it. Right. So <laughs> I've made it nicely and it's there perfectly for you guys. Hopefully you can see. And it's very poisonous to people that, do ins that um, need insulin because this has got it. Right. And then lastly, if you can have a look, I brought a mushroom. <coughs> now... These are quite cool. These are, these are things that you can actually eat, right? And this is a fungus. It's a fungus, and you can eat it. So what I did was I cut it, I cut it in half. There we go. Because you need to know what the inside looks like. And you're going to learn things about, um, what was those words? Hyphae, right? And rhizoids. And you're going to know about your uh, cetols. Uh, What's it? Um, it's your... Yeah, your cetols, which are specific things. Now, this hyphae, right? Hyphae are specific parts. And I'm going to go show you down on the board exactly what they are. Now, please remember, fungi you can eat. So don't stress too much about certain things. But something about... You might want to cook that first. I don't know. No, I'm not worried about things. Are you things. okay? Now, <laughs> understand something about fungi, right? Especially this one, Okay. Do not, I repeat, do not just go and eat these mushrooms, any mushrooms. Well, these mushrooms are fine because I bought them from fruit and veg, right? But if you're walking along, stay away from mushrooms. I don't, it's, they are highly, highly, they can kill you. I don't know how else to say it. <laughs> <laughs> highly, highly, they can kill you, <laughs> right? So they will kill you or they make, they make your life hell or they make you feel so nauseous and so sick they can be so bad for you. So please, if you are not sure about a mushroom, if you're not 100% you're sure that you can eat that mushroom, don't dare. Not even the professionals out in the open can, will um, eat mushrooms without them knowing. Right, so time to get back to the board. Okay, so I'll see you there now. <coughs> now, 
when we came, when we, when we did all of this just now, you noticed that we finished on this part. So guess what the next section is, right? The next section is, of course, fungi. Right, now, fungi, as I said, is unicellular or multicellular. Oh, wait, let's get a pen going here. Yeah? Unicellular or multicellular. Now, remember, what is multicellular? Lots of cells, right? So it can be unicellular or multicellular. Can you remember that word I used? Here it is, you. Eukaryotic. Come on, what is a eukaryotic? I'm not going to say a word. I'm not going to tell you what it is. I want to know what eukaryotic is. Okay, so it's eukaryotic. The cell walls are made up of chitin. Okay, it's chitin. Now, chitin is a kind of stuff that some animals are made up on the outside, right? So, they, as I said, let me get this up here so I can get there. It's multicellular, okay? It's outside is made up of chitin and that chitin can protect it okay now the fungi's are intertwined now fungi's intertwined together by threads called hyphae now remember i said to you they've got hyphae inside there now here we go if i had to draw this mushroom i know it's not a brilliant mushroom but there it is okay now this piece over here okay that has got little threads going through there you're all with me. Those are little, me and this pen, little threads going up and down, up and down, up and down, right? Those threads there are called hyphae, if you get what I'm trying to say. Those are, are hyphae, and you're going to learn that hyphae actually make up the, um, the fungus, right? Now, you've got hyphae. We've also got things called, remember I said to you, sporangia pore and uh, sporangiums, and I've got a picture of them later. Now, but Remember, it's heterotrophic or saprotrophic. Okay, so what I'm going to do, heterotrophic, we've spoken about quite a few times. Saprotrophic. What is saprotrophic? I'm going to ask one of you guys to answer that, just to see if you guys are awake and you know what I'm talking about. Saprotrophic, if you don't give me the answer by the end, I will make sure I give it to you. Please don't forget and remind me. Right? So, sap saprotrophic, I want to know what that means. Make sure that you send it to cat as quick as you can. Right? Then, it obtains food from whatever substrate that it grows on. Now, you know that you get fungi growing on trees. You get, or should I, yeah, mushrooms growing on trees. You get fungus growing on food. You get them, you know when your dad has just fertilized the ground, a few minutes later, all of a sudden you see all these little things popping up out of the ground. That's fungi, right? How do they make fungi, or, or should I say um, your, uh, what are those things I just ate? Um, 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 mushrooms? Mushrooms, thank you, Kat. <laughs> the mushrooms, how do they breed them? They keep them in the dark, and they put them in manure, or fertilizer, so that it can grow nicely, right? So that's what it actually is. So I just had a bite of it, so I'm going to change, change the subject completely, right? So whatever it grows on, it, um, it takes all its nu nutrients from there, right? And now, if I have a look at the next thing, okay, they replicate both sexually and asexually, which means sexually they make gametes, okay? You all know what, I don't know if you know what a gamete is. Gamete is, if I had to look at humans, our gametes are sperm and an egg, right? Those are our gametes. If I have a look at what they will have sexually, they will have a sperm. And, no, they're going to have a gamete, a male gamete, and they're going to have a female gamete. Because I don't want you to go write sperm for them, because they don't have sperm. Okay? And then asexually means that they reproduce without their gametes. Okay? So just think about it. I go to bed the one day, and the next day I wake up, and I've got a baby next to me that's doing it asexually. Okay? Does that make sense? Um, sort of. Hopefully <laughs> that doesn't weird, happen. But I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> now, all of these things are very important. Okay? They will reproduce sexually when the time or the area or the heat or the amount of water or whatever is good for them to do it. If it is not, if it's unfavorable conditions, then they do it asexually. If it's favorable conditions, then it is sexually. Now, I told you a few minutes ago that I've gotten pictures. Okay, now these pictures are cool because these pictures are the specific ones I was telling you about. This here is a sporangiopore. 
Oh, a sporangium, sorry. That is a sporangium. That's where they keep all the spores. Remember I said spores? Spores would be your gametes. Okay, so the spores, and then here, this piece here is your sporangiopore. That's just the pieces that come out. Now, that is like its stem. Now, remember when I showed you about the mushroom, I said the mushroom had all those little, uh, let me get the nice pen going here again. Remember I said that the mushroom had those little, little things that go there? So the mushroom was like that, and they had all these things called hyphae inside it, right? Now, hyphae, those ones, hyphae, okay, are the little tubes that do all the work. Now, these things are called sporangiopore, but they're also hyphae. Now, um, hopefully I didn't mess with your brain too much. Hyphae is the normal, simple type. Sporangiopore is specialized, in other words, it's specifically for holding the spore. So they're called sporophyte. Oh, they're called um, a spor a spor a sporangium. A sporangium is a specialized hyphae. And their job is to hold the spores. So hopefully that's, that's giving it all. Right, okay, so that's the one. And then of course, how gorgeous does that look? It's big and beautiful and stunning and very poisonous. So please don't eat it. Mm. Hey, it's <laughs> gorgeous. Th these are things that, can you remember the fairies used yeah, to sit on them? And that that's well. so cool, but poisonous. It will kill you like, like no tomorrow. It will kill you dead. So there is, like no there is no tomorrow. There is no tomorrow. Okay, so <clears throat> if I have a look, I want to go on to the next one because we need the role of microorganisms. Right, the role of microorganisms are very, very, very important on our earth. Okay, because remember that I said, said to you, everything needs a specific place. Everything goes well. Right, everything is completely perfect and we need them. Okay, so if I have a look at it, viruses. They control ecological processes. They control how things are going to go. So remember, <coughs> you learned about the, ni the nutritional cycles. Can you remember which one I'm talking about? Okay, the nitrogen cycle. Can you remember? Okay, now they control how much of the nitrogen cycle actually happens or not, right? They control bacteria, algae grow in ponds. If there's too much algae in the pond, they actually control it. The viruses actually attack it, okay? So they do control the whole part. They are also pathogens and cause diseases. So in other words, give me a nice big disease. Kat, can you give me a disease? Um, a disease. There's so many. I virus. Can't even think the of biggest one. one that everybody's scared of. HIV virus. There we go. HIV. It's a virus. Right. So don't forget it. It controls that. Then we've got bacteria, okay? Your bacteria are producers, they decomposes, and they recycle nutrients, such as nitrogen, like I just told you, right? So bacteria are very good for us, okay, and bad. If you look at it, your protista produce food, okay? We've had the food. It's not that difficult. We've had food. Then they are parasites. In other words, they grow on things and they suck them dry and they grab all the nutrients and they hurt the other ones. Can you remember? That is what a parasite is. Okay? It also is a pathogen and causes decomp uh, a, a pathogen or a decomposer. It gets rid of dead, decaying matter. Okay, cool? And then the last one, fungi converts organic matter into decomposed pathogenic. Okay? So something that we can use, it gets rid of all the stuff. Okay? I've filled your brain with stuff, so please, I will see you in a few minutes. I think you need a break. Okay. Let's go for a break then. Get that glass of water, guys. Get everything you need. Put your thinking caps on. Refill your pens. Say hi to your little brother and get back as soon as you can. See you just now. Welcome back, Grady Levens. 
Wow, what an awesome show it's been, guys. And time goes so fast when you guys are here and we're having fun and Llewellyn is jumping around the studio. I love times like this. So let us know if this is not the perfect start to your year. I don't know what is because for me, this is awesome. And I hope that you guys are going to be joining us right through the year because here we breed, literally, we breed A students. So you better make sure that you are seated right where you are every week, guys. We're looking forward to seeing you guys every week because right now this is such a perfect start i'm enjoying it Llewellyn. i don't know about you hey i'm loving it but i always do <laughs> i know <laughs> what i want to do is is i want to have a look at some questions now <clears throat> this came out of an exemplar it's a nice question and they, it's something that you can put your head around and start thinking okay so what they did the question i'm not going to read it word for word but you can read it but what i'm going to say is that there was somebody with a throat throat infection right so he went to the doctor and they took a swab of this th of this infection this bacteria and they put it on agar now please don't forget agar Oh, where it is? There it is. Agar is very cool because you can grow bacteria on it, right? So they put on agar in a pe petri dish. That's another big word, right? And they let it grow, right? But they want to see what bacteria, uh, what bacteria it is, and what antibiotic can kill it. That's what they did. So what they did is they put it on a pe petri dish. There it is, and. That that looks like German at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it down so you can have a look at the key. Okay, now. There's the key, it's a little bit small. Okay, so all the black, the simple black one, is the zone with no bacteria growth, okay? And all the other funny shaded one is where bacteria grew. So this is bacteria, right? This is no bacteria, right? Are you all with me? So this is where the bacteria hasn't grown. You all happy with that? So hopefully, I'm gonna switch to and from the slides all the time so that you can get it. So let's have a look at it, okay? State one difference in um, acti the, the, the active between antibiotic A, uh, B, and F. So explain what's the difference between B and F. So let me go back. What's the difference between B and F? Let's have a look. B and F. There's B. Look at the, look at the size of this. There's B. And there's F. Okay, oh, sorry, a little bit bigger. Now, what does that tell you? If B has got this whole black section, and remember black means there is no bacteria growth. If B is like this size and F is like this size, what does it tell you? Automatically, it should tell you that the antibiotic, oh sorry, all these little strands, this, the, these pieces here, where all the letters are, they tried different types of antibiotics. I forgot to tell you that, so sorry. Right, so they've tried different types of antibiotics. We're all with me. Okay, so they put this by antibiotic there, this one there, that one there. So at F, there's a specific antibiotic. On B, there's a specific by an antibiotic. So what does that tell you? What does that tell you about the antibiotic? Right, to me, that tells me that antibiotic B is very effective to this virus, it, oh, this bacteria, it kills this bacteria. Remember the bacteria started all in there, they put the antibiotics there, and it killed everything that, that way. Or they put the antibiotics there and it didn't grow towards it. So it stops it from reproducing. Right. This one, they could come a little bit closer. So what does that tell you? Okay. It means it does stop it, but not as well as B. So the question was, let me get back there, state one difference in activity between antibiotics B and F. B is a much better antibiotic than F to this type of bacteria. Cool. Now, let's have a look at the next one. The patient was known to be allergic to B. Oh, now, now we've got a problem, right? So the best antibiotics that we've got, this patient decides to be the only one to be allergic to this antibiotic. So now, the doctor cannot give this antibiotics to this person. Right? So what the doctor goes up and says, well, now we're in trouble. So cross this one out. We're not going to use it. There's nothing we can do. Pick another one. Which one would, would you pick? Would you pick A, which is very small, F, which we spoke about earlier, or would we have a look at C, D, or, oh, sorry, E, D, or C? Take a guess. Me, personally, I would definitely, definitely go with E. Because have a look. It kills the bacteria, or the bacteria can't get close to it, 
not as well as B, but enough, if you get what I'm trying to say. It's the next best antibiotic. So let's go have a look at the question again. Right, there we go. The patient was known to be allergic to antibiotic B. Let's see, which antibiotic should the patient be given? Come on, I, not even, even before I looked at the, oh, the question, I could find out what the answer is. Can you remember what it was? It was definitely, one more time, it was definitely E. Definitely E. It's the best one there after B. Okay, then, let's see, the next one was, explain your answer to your question. You know what, I, I, it's, I think you guys are getting this quite easily, I think. Okay, why would you choose E? Because it is the one that had less bacteria closer to the antibiotics. It's the one that was the biggest area of no bacteria growth after B. B is the best, E was the second best. I'm sure you could understand that from the picture. Right, you're all with me so far. I, I think this is a stunning question. And I promise you, this type of question is very good for you. You need to have a look, look for these questions because they like asking this. Right, it's, a, it's like a hands-on type of thing, which is nice. Right, let's have a look at the next question. If I can get there, there we go. Here we go. The organism causing the infection seems to be resistant to two of these antibiotics. Resistant. Now remember, you can't just take any antibiotics. So you can't just go home, you're feeling sick. Oh, I remember I took those antibiotics and um, let's take those again. First of all, you didn't finish your antibiotics, which is very bad. Okay? You need to finish all antibiotics. The strain completely so we can kill that thing in your body. The second of all, how do you know that bacteria will be able to be killed by that antibiotic? Okay? So you need to make sure, you can't just go and take any antibiotic. It's very bad for you. Okay? So let's go have a look. Now I know that it's, if I have a look at it, there it is. Which ones out of all of them, A to D, or to F, A to F, which ones are immune? Which, which ones of the antibiotics did not work on the bacteria? Let's have a look. I'm going to, I can't erase it, so, so just have a look. F is nice and big. Oh, wait, that didn't work. F is nice and I'll put them back. There's F, right? There's E, okay? There's D, D you can still see. There's C, and there's A. Okay, have a look at that. Can you see that? Which ones would they be? I think if you know your stuff carefully. Remember, this black spot over here, this specific black spot over there, okay, that's just where the antibiotic was put down onto the agar, right? So that means this antibiotics is not growing over there. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? So it's definitely, if I have a good look, it's definitely, I just want to get rid of that, it's definitely A and C. A and C are the two where the bacteria is grown all the way to the end. All the way to the end. So that is a nice, easy answer. So if I go back and I have a look at that question again, okay, which two antibiotics are referred to as uh, the statement, whoa, 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 the organism causes infection seems to be resistant to two of these antibiotics. Can you remember which ones they are? They A and C. Remember, they couldn't get close enough. And then it says, which two antibiotics are referred to in the statement above, let's see. Let's have a good organism causes infection, seems to be resistant to two of these antibiotics. Which two antibiotics are referred to in the statement above? It is A and C. So that is the question, not that. That was just a statement. Okay, the next one, explain your answer to question one. Have you noticed how you get an answer and they always ask you to explain it? Okay? The reason for that is it's not just knowing what is going on. You need to understand it. Understanding is very important in biology. So make sure you listen to your teachers. Because if you don't listen to your teachers, you can read out of a textbook. You need to understand it, and that's what your te teacher does. She helps you understand it. Now, this guy says that these two antibiotics are resistant, or the bacteria is resistant to these specific antibiotics. Which ones are they? They were A and C. Why is it? Because the Bacteria grows all the way to the outside of the area or all the way to the, back, the, the antibiotic itself. The antibiotic did not stop any of the growth. Okay, so hopefully you're understanding that. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that because I'm, I know that you guys are listening and you're getting there. Right, so 
is there any more? That's it. The patient was given a five-day course of appropriate antibiotic. Remember, they couldn't take B. He had to take something else. Can you remember? So it's the appropriate antibiotic. Explain why it is important to finish. Remember, I moaned at you earlier. Finish the course of antibiotics when you are, f when you are feeling better. Now, ex understand this. When we take antibiotics, I take it now, and I'm killing off the bacteria. Right. Now, there's very little in me. There's, let's say there's 10 instead of like 5,000, right? So there's 10 left. We've killed off all the others, right? And those 5,000 are not doing anything to you yet. So you think, ah, I'm nice and strong, and we're cool. We can go jogging again. We can do everything. Mark, keep the antibiotics for the next time we need it. We're going to be cool. That's a bit of a problem, right? Because what happens is those bac that bacteria is still inside you. So they're either going to flare up again, which means they're going to infect you all over again, or they're going to change their DNA. So they get used to this um, antibiotic. And because they get used to this antibiotic, they can change, which means this antibiotic is not going to work. And especially if it changes and then give it gets given to another person, what's going to happen? We're going to start a new bacteria, and that's going to grow, and we're going to have to get new antibiotics. They're going to have to do more work in the labs. So do you understand where I'm coming from? Very, very, very important to finish your antibiotics. You need to kill all the bacteria before you stop your antibiotics. That's why it gives you five days and not three. If it was going to last three days, he'd give you three days. Finish it, no matter how well you're feeling. Finish the antibiotics. We cool with this. Trust me, my mom used to moan at me often because of the exact same thing. Right, so what I want to do now is, before I carry on with the lesson, I, hopefully you understood all those questions. Now, I'm going to go on to diseases, right? And there's a specific thing that I want you to have a look at, okay? I've used a book, right? It's um, Solutions for All uh, Life Science, grade 11. Now, Kat, I know you've got the book there because I brought it with you. Have a yes, look at it, right? I, do. I want you to pa go to page uh, 37, if I'm not mistaken. 37. 37. It's definitely 37. Okay. I'm sure it is. Yes. By the way, this book is by Macmillan. It's the Life Science. Yes, and it it's Macmillan's book. For definitely. All. So, Someone Kat, come up here because have a good look at those pictures. This is disgusting, huh? Llewellyn. Please just look at that. And I think those are awesome, right? Okay. Have a look at this. Guys, look at this. There, the, there they are. Look at that. I want you to remember, it's ringworm and it's foot, uh, athlete's foot. Okay? Just have a good look at it. This is common to all athletes. That's why you should wear slops in a shower when you just go shower everywhere because you can get that with ease. Ringworm's the same thing, right? I just thought the pictures in this book are very nice. Yes, they are they, I love this graphic book as well. They are nice. Which is cool. <laughs> so, I just had to show you. Sorry, guys. I had to show you that. Now, if we have a look at this, we're going to have a look at viruses. Now, you need to know that these um, diseases that we're going to get you are very important. Okay? They're going to ask you about these viruses. So, let's have a look at it. HIV. Okay? Now, I put HIV AIDS for a reason. Okay? Now, let's test people's knowledge. HIV slash AIDS. Is that the virus? It's definitely not. AIDS is not a virus. Okay? HIV is the virus. HIV is the virus that attacks you, and once it's done very bad harm to you, then something happens. Right. So if we have a look at it, okay? Remember that I get foot and mouth disease? There it is. Oh, me and this pen. Foot and mouth Foot and mouth, mouth disease is cool. I've got a photo of that, so that's quite nice. Foot and mouth disease, influenza is something that you get very often, right? Okay, you get chicken pox. You remember these chicken pox that you got when you were much, much younger, right? Your chicken pox and measles. Now, what has all these things got in common? When you were a baby, this is the biggest thing. When you were a baby, you got immunized from it, okay? This is where they take the virus and they make it very, very weak and they inject it into you so that your body can learn to fight it. Because remember, viruses cannot be killed by antibiotics. Okay, you need to go ask your educator about that, your, your teacher. She will know exactly what to do. Right, so just want to show you. There's foot and mouth. My I hope it's goodness. beautiful. Cat, 
over to you. I don't even want to look at your photos anymore, <laughs> Llewellyn. They are so disgusting. But for those of you who like creepy photos, I'm going to put some up just so that you guys can have an up-close and personal look at them. They're really gross, though. Check out our notes, guys, on the website. It's on the page. Everything is on the page for you guys. You guys don't need to stress. Just print them out and study them really hard. It's been such an awesome show, guys. Make sure you join us same time, same place next week for some more life science, guys. I'm warning you. This year is going to be fantastic and you don't want to miss out. So make sure you join us from us here. Bye-bye.